Good evening, guys. Welcome to another video in the off grid. Oh, yeah, with the light, it's better, right? Yeah, you must have thought, what is Andy doing with all these light bulbs? Putting them all together on this board here and then soldering like a mad dog here. Get this all connected. Okay, let me explain. Well, I had quite some comments about the, um, the, um, these batteries I bought in China, you know, people are not quite, uh, I would say people are a bit skeptic about these batteries if they are really good and cheap. And they wanted me, of course, to do a load test, a capacity test of these cells, which I'm super happy to do. But the capacity tester is not here yet. I've ordered it online and to save me 20%, I ordered it on AliExpress directly from China. And here we go, three weeks later, it is still not here. <laughs> I could have bought it from I could have bought it from eBay here from Australia directly, but it was 20% more. So I thought, well, I'm not in a hurry. I've got plenty of time. Obviously, you haven't because you are pushing to get this capacity test done for these batteries. So I thought I built something and we can start measuring the capacity of these batteries. And the main thing, because I've got this, this, um, that's just a gecko. That's fine. I've got this, uh, watt meter here, this power analyzer, it's called. So we can actually, we can actually measure the ampere hours going in or out of a battery and having all the details of our measurement. But I didn't have a load for these batteries big enough to actually start to discharge the battery correctly. So I thought, well, I've got all these lights here, all these light bulbs from my Outlander PHEV because I converted the lights to LED and I've got all these um, H4 lights here. They've got two, they've got two lights. One is the low beam and one is the high beam. And I also had two of these fog lights H7. So 55 watts, 55 and the H4 has 5560, but I have connected them in parallel. So we are using both the 55 and the 65 at the same time. So we've got around 120 watts per light bulb now at 12 volts. And that's why I put these two connectors in here so I can actually turn off two of these light bulbs or even four of them. And then I obviously can run the whole system with a lower load. So this is what I did this afternoon. And I used some four millimeter cables here and an XT60 connector, which should be fine for this purpose. It is about 11 amps per light bulb and half, yeah, 5.5 amps, six amps for one of these. So a little bit over 50 amps all in total at 12 volts. If we connect this whole system to a 3.5 or 3.2 volt system, obviously the current is lower. Okay, let me show you how it works. Okay, of course this is just, this is only a temporary setup. We've got a 1.5 millimeter cable here and these ones are smaller there. I think they are 0.7 or something. That's why I have three in parallel. And these are connected to an AC circuit breaker with 10 amps. There you can read it. ABB, 10 amps circuit breaker. And I'll show you in a minute how this is working with an AC circuit breaker. And then it goes into our power analyzer. I'm a little bit too scared to connect this all, so I've got a little bit of plastic in between. I haven't got the proper XT60 connector done with the um, ring lug here, so I can screw this all into the terminals and have this properly connected. So this is just a temporary setup to show you how it works. And then we've got our power analyzer, and this is our load, which is our light bulb setup here. All right, let's turn this one on, hey? And there we go, magic. And we can see 18 amps we are pulling at the moment at 2.2 volts only. And the voltage drop is because I'm using this th th uh, thin cable. Once I cable everything properly with four millimeter cable, we, we shouldn't have this voltage drop anymore. 
but here we'll see we are pulling 17 amps at the moment and we've got a 10 amp circuit breaker so this one will turn off in just a few seconds there we go and it works because it has a bimetal in it which is a thermal trigger for the um, for the circuit breaker but uh, let's talk about this setup in a future video and what I will do now, I will use a buck converter. And this one is directly connected to the 220 watt solar panel on top of my roof. So this is my input into the buck converter. And I have set the output voltage to 3.65 volt. And what I will do, I will use this one as a charger for this cell. And I'm charging this one, this cell up now to 3.65 volts and wait until the current is zero. So the battery is 100% full. And then we do a discharge to three point, no. And then we do a discharge to two volts. And this is exactly what the specs say from the manufacturer of this battery cell. So discharge to two volts, which is then 0% state of charge or charge to 3.65 volt per cell um, for 100%. So again, I fully charged the battery now with this buck converter here. We talk about this later in a later video as well. 3.65 volts as per the specs. <laughs> it just dropped again. And then we discharge to two volts and measure the ampere hours and then we've got a result. And I actually picked this cell, which is a bit damaged because um, one of you guys said well, you have, need to be careful when you buy these from China because sometimes they are repacking them. They are, so they are using used battery cells and put new heat shrink on and a new black sticker on the top and clean everything up and um, then sell them as new batteries. I'm not expecting that this is happening with these ones. They look really good and they don't have any damages at all, any scratches. They look really 100% new. But this one had a little dent here which I don't expect has any negative impact on this battery and another little dent here. And also what I saw is there's a little bit of a black mark here. See on the negative terminal? I don't know what that is. So maybe this is one of the repacked batteries from China. I, I don't really, I don't really know, but you never know. That's why I picked this battery. So if there is something wrong with this battery, we will see that in the capacity test. And of course, I will tell you here on the channel. Okay, let's hook this battery up to the DC-DC converter here and then fully charge it during the next days. It will take a while. Oh yeah, it will take a while. Before you start commenting again, I know this is dangerous what I'm doing because I've got no safety equipment on this battery at the moment. I'm not talking about the breaker or something or, uh, or fuse or something. I'm talking about over voltage or under voltage, disconnection, electronics, nothing. There's no battery management system connected to the battery. This is the raw cell and I've connected them directly to the buck converter and charged them with 3.65 volts and a lot of amps, hopefully. The next couple of days I will be working from home and I will monitor the battery all day long. I will come out every couple of hours here and measure the voltage directly at the terminals of the battery here and see that we are not exceeding 3.65 volts. It doesn't really matter at the beginning because the battery is probably at 40-50% state of charge at the moment, so it will take a lot of amps at the moment to uh, charge the battery. But once we get a little bit higher in the voltage, I will measure frequently and make sure it's not going over 3.65 volts. I'll promise. So don't comment. <laughs> I know that. And the same when we discharge. I've got no under voltage discharge, disconnect, electronic here, nothing. We put the load on all the light bulbs and discharge the battery. And I have to measure again and make sure it's not going under 2.0 volts. And then I have to turn off and then we've got our result here. I've ordered all this test equipment. It's on the way. It's coming. It will be. It will be here for other tests. And this is just the first test because you are nagging me all the time, and asking do a capacity test with these batteries. So I'm doing one now, and we will do more testing, of course. Ah, yeah. As an update as well, I showed you the two batteries which were not quite all right with the last delivery. So this one had two little dents here in the corners, 
and the other one there was another one which had some like some uh, staining this actually looked really like they put some new heat shrink on it and there were some leftovers from the old heat shrink underneath i don't know we will find out but they have agreed to replace these two battery cells even the capacity should be fine because i measured the internal resistance and the voltage and everything so they should be fine but they have agreed to replace these two batteries and they also gave me another discount on my additional order and i have ordered i've listened to you again i have ordered another eight of these cells so we can build a 48 volt battery here in the off-grid garage with about 15 16 17 kilowatt hours of capacity and this will be enough to charge the model 3 overnight for my commute at least i need about eight five to eight kilowatt hours and if we have 15 kilowatt hours here, if the batteries are full, um, there is also a little bit of buffer then. So it, it makes sense to make the battery as big as possible. All right, guys, so far this workbench update from tonight. Well, at least here it's night. It is pitch black outside. And as always, thank you so much for watching and we shall see us again in the next video very soon. I don't expect a result tomorrow or something. It will take a long time to charge this battery up for my solar system here. But you know, again, I've got so much time. I've got plenty of time, so why not? I need to wait for all this equipment coming in anyway. And at least, well, because we are converting all this energy of this battery into heat basically afterwards, so we are wasting all the energy, well, we charged the whole system with solar energy in the first place, so we are not using any grid power for that to charge this battery. But in future tests, when we have the battery built and we do capacity tests or something, we will do a regenerative discharge. That means we are not going to waste the energy with some, co some kind of, of heating elements or something, or some people use inverters and heat guns, then all these little heater fans or, or hair dryers or something, you know. But you don't worry about it, this will all come. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. Have you schon gesagt, Alice? All right, guys, see you later. We should actually, hang on, should actually turn it on again. Ah, oh, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? It is Christmas time, guys.